Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide for Floor 94 of Abyss. Floor 94 will have you squaring off against Assassin Sid. He spends most of the fight in stealth and will spawn various different shadow clones of himself. In order to get rid of the shadow clones, you need to deal AoE damage to them. This team really punishes you for not bringing enough AoE. And when I say AoE, I mean actual AoE attacks, not pseudo AoE attacks like Vildred's basic attack skill or Spectre Tenebria's basic attack skill. Those don't actually cut it. You need to bring actual moves that target all enemies. As for the team comp that I've decided to go with here, I'm going with Adventure Raz as my main tank because, well, he's pretty much the best PvE tank in Epic 7 and also has an AoE attack of his own in his S3. Tamarin, who has an AoE attack and is, again, just a really strong healer, the best PvE character probably in Epic 7, Mercedes, and Vivian. If you have other AoE DPS that you want to play, such as Immortal Wukong, Navy Captain Landy, Seaside Bologna, any of these things will work. I've just decided to go with Mercedes and Vivian, as these are two free-to-play options for the account. Let's take a look now at the actual characters and how I have them built. For Raz, we're at level 60, 6-star Woken. At least level 50, 5-star Woken will probably be fine for you. Skill levels are all still just the basic bare minimum you could do, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Awaken here on the tree is fully maxed. Not entirely necessary, but something you probably should do. As for the actual gear, boots are going to be speed. Ring is health percentage. Necklace is health percentage. Speed set ideally is a 4P set and effectiveness at 65% plus. Artifact is Arius, but if you don't have it for whatever reason, Adamant Shield, Rise of a Monarch, these are alternatives that you can use. Moving on to Tamarin. Level 50, 5 star Woken is the bare minimum I would go with. As for the actual skill levels, Shining Star at plus 1, Song of the Forest at plus 7. And then for the actual gear, Boots as Speed is the main stat, Ring as Health Percentage is the main stat, Necklace as Health Percentage as the main stat. I recommend Wondrous Potion Vial as the artifact for her if you have it, because, well, there's a lot of debuffs that are coming out in this fight, such as Defense Break and Poison, and when characters are poisoned, they receive significantly less healing, so that is why I decided to go with that. Next up, let's talk about Vivian. Vivian is just largely here for her skill too, Thunder God's Cry, just because it's a consistent AoE move that has a two-turn cooldown. She also gives immunity and attack buff for the team, with mana amplification, which is nice, right? Just overall, fairly solid uh, DPS. Artifact is Daydream Joker to boost the damage. Exclusive equipment is the 50% combat radius on mana amplification. And as you can see, it's pretty much just a bunch of dash gear and free dash pass gear that I have obtained and a couple of pieces from Arena that I've spent my conquest points on. Feel free to just use your best dash pass gear that you've gotten uh, or use anything that you've gotten from the Adventurer's Path. Pretty much any set will work fine for her as long as she has a good mix of critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and attack percentage. And then the last character that we're going to be using is Mercedes. I highly recommend getting powered up Mercedes if you do not have her. In case you do not know, Mercedes has her live 2D art changed to this one and gets significantly stronger after completing episode 3 of Adventure. So if you are not at least that far, please take the time to do so. Unlock powered up Mercedes. She is significantly stronger. And of course, the recommended artifact is Magic for Friends, which you get alongside a powered-up Mercedes. It is what makes the character super strong. It gives her essentially an AoE attack as a counter on a cooldown. That could be super useful for helping kind of speed up this fight. In general, Mercedes is just incredible because Blazing Eye of Cal gives a attack buff for your entire team and is a pretty potent AoE attack. And then Dimensional Rupture hits not only once for big damage, but twice for big damage, assuming that she has attack buff, which, spoiler alert, you get from Blazing Eye of Cal, and Magic for Friends enables you to counter with this skill. So essentially, Mercedes in two turn rotations could very easily generate five AoE attacks. She is free, everyone has access to her. That's why I decided to go with her. As for what we're actually playing, just make sure you get a decent amount of critical hit chance and critical hit damage, good attack. Well, honestly, my critical hit chance is a little bit low at 77%. Anything over like 85% should be pretty good. Boots are speed, ring is attack percentage, and then necklace is critical hit damage. Same right side also applies to Vivian or whatever main damage deal you're deciding to go with with AoE. 
All right, now that we know what the team looks like, let's jump into it and get into the actual fight. All right, there's nothing special to say about this very first floor. You basically are just going to burst down the ads as fast as possible. And then, just like with all the previous floors up until this point, we're just going to walk down the floor boss. We can just spend our S2 on Raz, because it'll be back up long before we get to floor 2. Lucky magic for friends. Just S2 here. Since we already have attack buff, we can press S2 here. Alright, with the ads done, all we do now is just walk down the boss like we always do. Build up a bunch of souls going into the next floor. Alright, let's do this. I'm scared. Call. Mercedes, preparation complete. Obey me. Should we get started? I S2, just because we have some damage on multiple members. S2 to heal up that ship again. Probably get there off of Vivian's next attack, assuming it crits. Ah, uh, close. Alright, so now on to Sid. So Sid's going to start with his ultimate ready to go. It's going to strip all of our buffs, so we don't want to use any buffs at the start. We don't want to waste our idol form either. That's pretty much just a waste. Best thing you could do here is soul burn Raz and hope for a defense break for just some free chip damage here. As you can see now, he's going to spawn all these adds, strip all of our buffs, and defense break us. So we S3 with Vivian, get up our attack buff, idle mode, get our combat readiness push, and get rid of those defense breaks. S2 with Mercedes. Sadly didn't crit, because my, uh, my gear is not the best. Let's do this. S3 with Raz, because that's also AoE. Soul burn on Vivian just for extra damage. Oh, magic for friends. This is the main reason we play Mercedes. We kill up all the adds really free here. Can soul burn Raz, see if we can pick up some more damage. We're going to have to deal with another break in a second. So we're going to hold our AoEs. Speed up again. See if we can get some extra damage in with the Soul Burn. Awesome. Alright, so now, because he's under 50%, he will automatically take the turn, kill all of his Shadow Clones, and then use his S3 for defense break. So keep that in mind. It might not occur at the same time as me. But basically, you're going to have to deal with essentially a defense break and a full strip at 50%. So we S3 here, kind of establish back our attack buff. We're going to burn here with Vivian now that we have attack buff. You can see, kills everything, because when he takes a turn, it kills all of his guys to basically double stun. So it's not as punishing as it looks. We're going to S3 here, just to get the CR cycle back around and refresh our attack buff. Let's 
Ooh, lucky magic for friends. This is why we're playing Mercedes, by the way. Lots of free value here. We're gonna soul burn here. As you can see, we're getting a lot of value here. We're gonna hold this now. Because I could, in theory, idle mode, and there's a chance I kill this, but I want to hold it just in the off chance, right? That, like, it, this doesn't work out for you. I'd rather you practice it, things being kind of safe and steady. Kind of save for our defense break here. Oh no, Roz, don't make me a liar. Alright, as you can see here, now he's going to reset everything. Luckily, we didn't get defense broken or anything but basically at this point it's the same old song and dance you just end up going idle mode if you have to to refresh uh get rid of all of the debuffs re-establish your attack buff wherever possible and then just unload all of your aoe and it should be pretty free there you go that is abyss 94 in a nutshell this one not too bad I think it's a little bit harder than 93, but for the most part, it's nothing compared to 92, in my opinion. If I missed anything or you have any other questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you have alternative team builds that you can suggest to help out your fellow players, put that down there in the comment section below as well. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 95. Later now.